and welcome to the town of Austin town, um, town. I was going to say work session. Town hall meeting for November 18th, 2014. Please stand for the pledge. going to have a presentation of the tentative budget for 2015, hard to believe. Uh, we're going to ask Maddie to come up, uh, she's the budget officer, and she's going to give us a presentation and go through uh, some of the high points of the budget. And we will have open questions on the budget, and then we can open it, the floor up to other issues. But uh, we're going to primarily start on the budget this evening. of the 2015 tentative budget. Um, the budget is prepared in the supervisor's office every fall, um, at which point it goes to the town clerk for publication and then it goes to the town board. Um, the town board makes their adjustments, speaks with department managers about what if any changes they'd like to see made. Um, we have a presentation like this one, and then we hold a public hearing in which the public can come and let us know if they have any comments, and then hopefully the budget will be adopted the second week in December. So that's sort of the timeline that I just went through. Um, this is truly a labor of love going through the town budget. Um, we seem to start earlier every single year. This year we started preparing it in the last week of July um, to be submitted to the town clerk by October. <coughs> Basically, we just want to make sure that we really have time to give the department heads a chance to come up with the, the true needs of their department. What needs are not being met um, and where can we do better? So uh, we take a couple of months and we put it all together and we submit it to the town clerk. Um, if anyone has seen what our budget looks like online or in the hard copies, there's a first column that says uh, requested, 2015 requested. That's the numbers that was asked for by all of our department managers. And then the second column is the one that the supervisor approves. And then once the budget is adopted, that's the third column. So the town budget has a couple different components. The first one is the town general, which is a tax that everyone who lives in the town of Austin pays. So whether you uh, live in the village of Ossining, um, the unincorporated area of the town, or the 91% of Briarcliff Manor that is in the town of Ossining, you pay the town general tax. And it is one of the smallest sections of your tax bill, which we'll see in a moment. The unincorporated area basically serves as the village government for those folks who don't live in a village. So all of the things not taken care of in the town general is where you, um, is what you see in the unincorporated area budget. So police services, the highway department, building, planning, and zoning, and code of and then finally, we have special districts, which is water, sewer, ambulance, light, fire, and refuse and recycling. So, like I said, the town general is one of the smallest pieces of your budget, if not the smallest. Um, but it really does a lot of work for you. There are, uh, most of our departments live in the town general, um, including now our court, the administration, which is the town board, and the town supervisor's office. Um, we pay for part of our IMA for finance and IT services with the village of Osting tax collection, the assessor's office, the town clerk and her staff, elections, the whole senior nutrition program, parks, and facilities maintenance. So then in the unincorporated area, here are the services that you pay for in there. After you see the highway department, revenues and recycling, ambulance and fire protection, those are special districts as well. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about the new police contract, but we also have a new addition to the unincorporated budget this year, which is the uh, recreation IMA which uh, we'll talk about a little bit further on, but that used to be in the town general budget. And basically what the town board had discussed, um, also working with the Village of Austin, is that Village of Austin residents were technically paying for that recreation service twice by it being in the town general budget. So basically what uh, the supervisor and some folks from the Village of Austin did, we all sat down, decided um, on what a fair thing would be in order to give the unincorporated area residents the same uh, access to the services in the recreation department at the same price. <coughs> and so we have a new recreation IMA that's being charged to the unincorporated area. 
So here are some highlights. Um, one of the best pieces of news is that we have a 0% increase in the unincorporated area fund. Basically the 20 fund, which is the unincorporated area where you have police and the building department, and the 31 fund, which is the highway department, are blended rate. So together that comes to a 0% increase. Uh, we're well within the tax cap. The tax cap is continuing to be a challenge for many municipalities around New York State and it's only getting tighter. Uh, basically the tax freeze this year says that municipalities are no longer even allowed to pass legislation to get around the tax cap. Um, the town has yet to try to do that, um, and this budget is no exception. As we talked about, the recreation IMA moved to the unincorporated area in order to ensure parity in fees between village bossing and unincorporated residents for things like classes, use of the pool, and recreation cards. We still have a six-year capital plan schedule, which is available on the website. Um, the taxable assessed value actually has gone up just a little bit in the unincorporated area and an even smaller bit in the town general fund. We're expecting a 6% increase in our health insurance plan. Um, when folks talk about the tax cap and it being 2%, it's actually not even a full 2% this year. 1.56% is our growth factor that we're allowed. So when you look at the budget as a whole, you say it's only allowed to go up 1.5%, but just one of our expenses, which happens to be one of the largest, is expecting a 6% increase, you understand sort of the wall that we're up against. If we have to pay the 6% increase, it has to come from someplace else. Um, additionally, uh, Dale Cemetery is being supplemented by the general fund this year to the tune of $100,000. So, like I said earlier, um, the town of Austin, which is the uh, top orange box, is the smallest part of your tax bill, less than 2%. And you can see sort of what the breakdown is across Westchester County, school district, obviously the largest, and then your local government, which if you're in the village of Austin, it's your village tax. If you're in the village of Briarcliff, it's your village tax. And if you're in the unincorporated area, it's your town tax and your special districts. So here are just some facts and figures about the rates. Um, the town general did go up 1.6% uh, for the average homeowner that weights to $4.81 additional on your uh, town tax bill. And then the unincorporated area, like I said, zero increase. And because of the changing assessments, the average um, tax for a residence has actually gone down in the unincorporated area by $7.57. So this is a little bit more detail about the special districts. Um, based on that average assessment for folks in the unincorporated area, these are the prices that are paid for the special districts. So the average homeowner in the unincorporated area pays about $3,100 in town taxes the town general, the unincorporated budget, and the special districts. So here are some very crowded pie charts that I won't uh, go through with you. Um, but basically, like I spoke about earlier, the general fund, which is the smallest part of your tax, um, encompasses all of these things and more. There are a couple of them that the pie slices were so small that they don't fit on the screen. Um, but basically, we, we like to show this to you because you are really getting your money's worth out of that 2% of your tax bill because it covers many of the functions um, that serve you as, as an Austin resident. This is another breakdown of the unincorporated expenses. If you see right up here at the top right-hand corner, uh, the green portion, that's the police. Um, as you can see, the police is, is a very significant part of our budget, even now that we have contracted with the Village of Austin for police services uh, from 2015 going forward. Um, it is savings over what we have in Westchester County. And um, everyone was, was sort of wondering, well, if that savings is gonna come through, what is, what is that gonna look like? We're saving, you know, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars, where's that money gonna go? We need to get a tax decrease. Well, that is not really possible. Uh, what we were talking about with the tax cap is that you're allowed to go up by that increase every single year. But if you go down, you can never get that back ever, ever again. Uh, so basically, we'd have to crawl up from the 2% all over again, and we would never be able to get back to the levy that the unincorporated residents are used to. Um, so where has that extra money gone? Well, part of it was the recreation IMA that I spoke about earlier. Part of it went to budgeting for the annexation lawsuit. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, a few residents that want to become part of the Village of Briarcliff Manor and leave the unincorporated area of Austin have petitioned um, Briarcliff the village of Brackley said, uh, yes, that sounds fine. The town said, no, thank you. And so now we're in the appellate court, um, which is going to be a, a very costly lawsuit. So the unincorporated area is going to pay half, and the town general is going to pay half. So 
we budgeted $100,000 in total for 2015. We also put additional monies towards the payments on the police station. As you know, the police station has been sold. Um, all of the um, monies generated from that sale went back towards paying down the bond payments. Um, and we are hoping to get uh, another balloon payment or half of the balloon payment budgeted for this year. And the whole building will be paid off by 2017. And then finally, there was still a couple hundred thousand dollars left over. So that's going to the contingency account. Um, as many of you know, um, paving is one of the more expensive things that a municipality has to do on a regular basis. Um, you've seen some of the roads around Westchester County, especially last winter, um, the potholes, it was a problem all across New York State. So the town board has really made it a priority in 2015 to get some of that paving done um, that has been needed, um, as well as pay for some of the scars and tax hurts. So here's another breakdown of where the highway fund services go. Snow removal, surprisingly, only 6%. And then this is where uh, the revenue comes from. So as you can see, it's mostly derived from property taxes, as you might expect. And same thing in the unincorporated area, but very much more so. So what could change between now and when the budget's adopted? Not really that much, we hope. Um, we still have yet to get our final figures for our health insurance. <coughs> so they projected 6%, could go up, could go down. Uh, we do have employees across all those four funds who do take the health insurance. So that might be a bit of a reduction, might be a bit of an depending on what our health insurance comes back with. Um, and then we just got a letter last week that we're going to be seeing an 8% increase in our electricity prices. We saw a 12% increase last year. Um, so we have to really examine if we're going to have to boost up the dollars that we have estimated um, in order to jive with that 8%. So you can visit the budget on the website. It has its own section, all of the tables that show you how the tax rates are calculated are available. If you have any questions, feel free to call our office. And there's a hard copy in the clerk's office and one in this building as well. Okay. So does anyone have any comments this evening that they'd like to talk about the budget? If, you, if you're going to make a comment, you have to go up to the mic. Please give your name your, and your address. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Stempler, 14 Bridal Path, uh, uh, Fox Hill. Uh, that big cemetery on, uh, on Hawks Avenue, is that considered, how does that fall tax wise? Is it commercial property? Is it tax exempt? Is it they have a great big piece of land in their end? It's to actually town owned. Uh, Hawks? Oh, Hawks Avenue is St. Augustine's? There's two what. cemeteries out there, the St. Augustus on Hawks. That, of course, is, ta is tax exempt. Yes, sir. It's, private. it's owned by St. Augustine's Church. Yes. It's considered by the church? Yes. Church property. It's a profit making business, I'm sure. Of the, it's not sure. They're also a religious organization. People are telling Anybody else have any comments on the budget? <laughs> 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 if you want to just hold it, you have to hold it kind of close to your mouth anyway. of all the rec cards that were issued because we did a whole analysis. I don't have the exact number, but I can surely get it for you. 20% uh, of all the rec cards issued were issued to the unincorporated area. There was also a, a surcharge on some of the swimming activities, and uh, especially, if you, especially if you sent your child to camp or you, know, you had swim. Uh, swim. So as, as part of the negotiations, when we um, we made it so that the 
unincorporated area people paid the same amount of the rent card as the village people. It was $5 when we did the negotiations, but we don't know if they're gonna raise it in their fee schedule. Um, but it also brings all the rates down to the same price as the Village of Austin, including the Aquatic Center. I'm just wondering if, I mean, I, I couldn't tell what the actual cost was for right. this IMA, but, you know, I'm just wondering if the cost is actually worth the expense. Well, we've been paying the REC IMA for many, many, yeah. since 1998. The problem was that like we had along the way, we had taken some revenues and put it into the unincorporated area, and this is a uh, 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 an expenditure that was in the uh, was in the town general fund, which should have been in the unincorporated area a long time ago. So we did negotiate a lot of uh, give backs from the village, since the the reason that there was ever any difference with what people paid for the, especially in the aquatic center because the town never participated in the bond repayments. So we came out with this uh, agreement. We took on some things in the um, town general, uh, too, like the fireworks and the concert series. We took that out of the village of Austin, too, to make them, uh, one, they should be in there because everybody enjoys the fireworks and everybody enjoys the summer concert series. So, uh, But uh, it also helps them because you couldn't just say, we need recreation, so we couldn't just say we're not going to do a recreation. Right, well, fair enough, fair enough. Um, on the health benefits, uh, what percentage of the premiums do the employees pay? I'm sorry, we only have two mics because it was weird for you. But. So um, we have two unions. We have the Teamsters and we have CSEA, and then we also have non-union staff. Um, so our non-union staff pay 15% of premium for individual coverage and 25% of premium for family coverage. The Teamsters, depending on when they were hired, some of them pay a portion of their salary and then some of them pay a percentage of premium. So the newer hires pay a percentage of premium. Um, the CSEA, everyone but one person contributes at this time. Um, and the newer people contribute very much in line with what the non-union staff pay at this point. So between 10 and 15%. Um, and I believe that increases at the last year of the CSEA contract. Was any consideration given to actually changing those percentages? To changing the percentage in the union contract? No, well, obviously you can't change that. Right. But no, for the non-union So the question was, this was, let me help you. So the question was, was there any consideration to change those percentages? Mm -hmm. um, I will say that when um, this administration started in the beginning of 2012, um, the decision was made to really increase those percentages. So they're Which we're not high. anywhere near that, yet. what they are now. They had never been in the past uh, near 15 or 25% of premium. So um, our, our non-union staff have already taken a, a big step forward and, and we hope that uh, you know, it's not, not the last. And then uh, last but most importantly, the legal fees, Please sorry, last but most importantly, the, the allocation for the legal fees for the annexation. Uh, you proposed 50% from the town general budget, 50% from the unincorporated fund. The unincorporated area makes up such a small percentage of the town, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm guessing maybe 10 to 15%. And in essence, we'd be paying, not only do I think that portion is unfair, because the town's whole argument was that this annexation would not be in the best interests of any of the municipalities. So I don't understand why any of this should come out of the unincorporated area at all. But in essence, you're double dipping, just like you've made the adjustment in the recreation contract, but you're double dipping here because the, in, in essence, the a town outside would be paying 50% from its own funds plus its portion of the town general fund. So, it, so the, we'd be looking at paying something like 65, you know, 60 or approximately 60% of the cost, where Briarcliff Manor is paying well, almost Cliff, nothing. Okay, but, <laughs> but you have to remember one thing. Briarcliff Manor has their own $100,000 worth of fees, of lawyer fees. They have to have their own lawyers. But they I, I, I understand what you're saying. I have arguments on the other side. I've gotten calls on the other side. Why is the other people, you know, why are they paying for this uh, lawsuit too? Why is town general paying for it? The, the reason that- Why shouldn't town general be paying for it? 
because it was because the people that it will affect the most will be the people in the unincorporated area, especially the people that are not in 17 and 20. That would be it would be either a major shift in personnel, major layoffs, and I don't know how we would perform the services in that in that group that would be left without it being practically devastating. And so that was one of the con major considerations that we took for not for saying no to this um, to this whole uh, 17 and 20 annexation. The, the thing with the village of Osting is we have a lot of IMAs with the village of Osting and those would all have to be renegotiated. In the village of Briarcliff Manor, we have, um, would be, we don't believe that uh, the numbers that would, anyone would save any tax dollars. As a matter of fact, it's shifting so far the other way now that uh, with, we, we have asked the courts to make sure everybody shows their real numbers on, on that. So, I still but I understand what you're but, saying. But it's still double dipping. It's double dipping, and that's not that's not right. I mean, people that live in the unincorporated area deserve a fair, you know, a fair deal out of this. And then, you know, the, the unincorporated area fund is not a slush fund to be spent, however, you know, well, wherever I, I, and I, however, I, you know, the town. I don't consider. I don't cons I don't consider it, 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 that seventeen and twenty was if we don't pay the, spend the hundred thousand dollars, we're certainly gonna put it back into the contingency fund of the unincorporated. Or the fifty thousand know, whatever's left of that fifty thousand. This is not a slush fund. This is a lawsuit that's going on. A very serious lawsuit. No, I understand that. Okay. So we have to budget for it. We can't just be out there and say, okay, if we have these uh, these uh, lawyer fees, where are we going to put it? But again, it was something that was it is in the unincorporated area. The most affected area is the unincorporated area. It's just residual effects on the village of Osting and the village of Brighton Manor. I understand. I understand that, and I understand that you need to budget for it. But what I'm saying is, I don't think it's fair that the unincorporated area is getting hit with such an enormous chunk when we only represent a very, very small portion of the town. Well, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak on the budget?
uh, prepared to authorize 127,000. So my question to the board has to do with what was the justification for this salary decrease? And at last year's meeting, it was mentioned that it was because you had certain work issues going on with these two personnel. That if those work issues were solved, that the salaries would be restored. And so I'm questioning as to whether these work issues are still going on and what the position of the board is on this. Since the matter is currently in litigation, I would advise against responding regarding the current situation of the tax receiver. But I thank you for your comment, John. So my next question to those that are legal, Eric is not here. Wayne, of course, is. You need to get closer to the mic. I'm so sorry. Eric, is not, my, my next question would have to do with the legal counsel. As far as that decision was concerned, what would have been their thoughts at the time for having, for it, hopefully for advising the board to make that decision? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not quite sure, number one, I understand your question, but if I do understand it, I have to advise against responding because it is reflecting advice between counsel and the board, which is really uh, privileged. Hi. Um, I, I just want to clarify one thing. I wasn't on the board that, when uh, this all happened, um, and I have no knowledge, really, about the lawsuit. So, um, I... I will, um, am I bound by that too, Wayne? <laughs> One word? Yes. <laughs> well then, I will leave it there. I wasn't part of that decision. And then I guess my, my assumption then is this, uh, part of the ongoing lawsuit is the item that is presented the salaries to be reinstated to where they were. <laughs> if you have a comment, really if you have a comment question. about the salaries, make your comment. That's what we're here for. But we're not here to. My belief is that with both of these positions, whether it has to do with the highway department or the tax assessor, that the town of Austin with the salary structure that was in place before all of this started a year ago, was more than fair and equitable as far as the town was concerned because they were getting these services at less than most of the other uh, towns that are around here. So that, to have the, so that to have these salaries slashed as they were um, is, is essentially a disservice to professionals in their field. And many of us who are professionals in our field um, would certainly not take well to having salaries slashed. Thank you, and that's it. Thank you for your comments. We're really here to assist you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Jerry Gershner. I live at 42 Stonegate Road. I'd like to have a discussion amongst the town board members that are here regarding the capital plan for the town outside. We seem to be making very specific budget allocations for various items, yet I hear, I'm getting the opinion that, well, some contingency funds will paper some paving. I don't think $50,000 is gonna pay for very much paving. Um, and so I'd like to hear from the town board members what their philosophy is on maintaining the infrastructure. Well, as, as what, what was really meant by that is we wanted to use as much funds without bonding as we possibly could. You're absolutely right. We'll go the whole stretch of where we want to go. We're going to pick we're going to pick roads. We're going to start a whole paving process. Some of it's going to be bonded, but if some of it can come out of operational monies, then that's far better than bonding it. Even though money is cheap, you still have to pay it back. Well, I'm sure that you probably analyzed the roads, and even if you have to bond, how much are you planning to bond, and how much of the roads? We are going to sit. We're going to sit down and discuss that. We have not. We have just started working on that. So we'll we know work, the conditions of the roads. Well, wait, we're working on the 2015 budget, 
but does it sound to me like I hear of any plan to do road paving other than the, the few bucks that are left in the contingency plan? I would, would like to think that you said, well, maybe we're going to pay five miles of roads this year, and we estimate it's going to cost this, and we plan to float a bond issue this year for that amount. Uh, I, I don't think I'm hearing that, am I? No, no, but when we get to that point, and we are, it, which is not in, in, in our budget, we also have CHIPS money, we have also have other funds, so what we'll do is we'll sit down, we'll look at what we're going to do, put an action plan together, and find out if what we have to go out and put, if we have to bond or ban, whatever we have to do with the excess money. But we wanted to make sure that we had some money in there, either for uh, road re start the start of road repair and or and or tax search orders. Because right now we're bonding for tax search orders. Um, let's talk about the non-existent highway department garage and office. Well, are there any plans, can I hear from the town board members, can I hear your ideas on whether the town highway department facilities are adequate or inadequate and if they're deemed inadequate, what is your plan for actually putting them in a real permanent structure where the, 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 built the, the, the equipment can be maintained and preserved and not be subject to rusting because it's parked outside? Can I hear some discussion on that issue? We have, uh, we're constantly talking about where what we can do with the highway department, the parks department, and the other departments. But right now, it is not a top priority as we put the budget together. Right now, we have done a lot of safety uh, repairs to the highway garages. We're constantly working on them. And uh, we don't have any place to put a highway garage other than where it is right now. Well, I, I think that's not true. but. Um Consult some real estate professionals that might be able to I give said, you. I said right now we have advice. no place right now. We do not own property to put a highway garage on. That is true, but that um, but this has been going on for years and years and years, and I just don't think anyone is spending any time. It now sounds like you're throwing good money after bad by constantly repairing inadequate facilities. Thank you for your time. Can I hear from some other town board members as to how they feel regarding this? Hi. Uh, oh, the only town outside board member. Thank you. Duly <laughs> noted, and I'm sure that the rest of the board members care just as much. They're all part of the town. Too. But um, I, to your point, I think it is important. I agree as uh, that we do need to look at what it is we're going to do with the highway department going forward. It doesn't seem to be a, a functional fully sustainable, um, uh, you know, uh, situation, and I and I agree. It's been a while. I uh, years. I think we we are going to have to have a discussion and decide what it is we're going to do with it. As Madam Supervisor stated, I don't know what location at this point um, where we would put it, but I absolutely believe that it's a it's a big discussion. I mean, within the budget, not right now, but I think that there are a few things that are important. Our, what we're going to do, and Adam Supervisor has discussed this, but what we're going to do with our parks, they're not in great shape. I mean, they could be in better shape. Uh, you know, if you go to Ryder or Cedar Lane Park, as hard as our parks are, they need money. Uh, Absolutely something that I think 
would needs to be sort of a priority for us. Um, I had a question about the school budget. Is this is that included in all this? Uh, we have no control of the school budget. Who controls that? The school, the school board. <laughs> well, do they have hearings or something? I'm sorry? Do they have hearings on that? Yeah. They they it's actually the only budget that you vote on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I vote on it. Yeah. And they do have here, and they, have, they actually have started, I hate talking without the mic, but they've actually started uh, talking on the budget and talking about plans. So you can go to uh, school board meetings. Well, yeah. I comment on that. The, I went to Science High when, uh, when it was considered at that time the best public high school in the country. It was in an old school building that they had inherited, probably a 19th century building. They had inherited from some other high school. And um, they were surrounded, they're just off the Grand Concourse in the Bronx, and surrounded by old apartment houses. They had no no athletic field at all. They had a pool, uh, but there was no such thing as, as track meets or soccer fields or any of that other crap. And uh, the, the, I, I notice you have a huge soccer field, valuable real estate. Uh, soccer is not going to get you a job in today's market. What are you, you going to you be the next Pele or something? <laughs> What, what they should be concentrating on, I see, and I hate to say this because I'm interested in art, architecture, and design, but they have they have this uh, art program into their budget, their, into their curriculum. That's not going to get you a job today either. Nobody gives a damn whether you know who Vermeer was or... <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, sure there, I'm sure people will have differences of opinion you know, on that, I, I, uh, sir, to be honest with you. It's strange for me to say that, but I know very well that... that, that we I really, went, yes, but, but please, I think we have a very well-rounded school. And yes, they do have soccer fields, they have football fields, they have, you know, everything that's suburban life. I grew up in the city, too, and, out in, and people move here to have the open spaces that they mm. have. See, you have, this is the second open space you're complaining about. <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, it's, very, it's very important that, we, that our children get exercise and they, you know, and they play sports and they have art and they have all of their uh, uh, things. But if you have any issue on the school budget or library budget, those are totally different boards and we do not have any um, control over those budgets at all. We also don't have any control over the village's budget. So if you're in the village of Osling, uh, you go and visit the village board for that, the village of Osling board, and if you're in the village of Briarcliff Manor, you go to the village of Briarcliff Manor board for the village taxes and, you know, okay? But uh, I totally hear you, but uh, I think some of those fields, I've raised two boys through the school system and I'm very happy. Um, yeah, they're playing yeah. professional soccer now. Uh, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have some very uh, uh, nice athletes out there, so. Oh, Does anyone else have a, anybody else have a comment on the budget? Well, uh, I'd like to thank the gentleman for adding a little levity and uh, worthwhile comments. Um, give me your name and my name is Mark Fry. I'm with the Austin Boat and Canoe Club. Address, and, address sir. Uh, I uh, live in uh, Sleepy Hollow, 41 Hudson Terrace. I've been with the Austin Boat and Canoe Club. And we have some good news for all of the Austin town. Yeah. Is this about the is this about, it's the, about budget? the budget? Yes, it is, Madam Supervisor. Um, we are now in our 100th year of service to the town and village of Austining and its residents by providing affordable access to the Hudson River for local boaters, fishermen, and citizens. And as it's uh, stated in our uh, license agreement with the town, um, the club agrees to operate the Austining Boat and Canoe Club to provide boating recreation to the public, especially residents of the town of Austining, and to provide water and hunt boating safety and other activities all as consistent with our mission statement. The club will actively cooperate with the town in promoting the activities of the Austin Boat and Canoe Club as an integral part of the town of Austin recreation program. 
So we are very proud to host the Ossining Community Sailing Club at no cost to the taxpayers. Sir, do you have any questions on the budget? Uh, yes, sir. it's not a question on the budget, Madam Supervisor, or comments on the budget. Um, so I wanted to make the point that uh, you're all probably wondering, well, if we're providing all these wonderful services to the town, what does it cost the town taxpayer? It costs the town taxpayer absolutely nothing. Well, can't be free, can it? Well, I pay $220 in, in uh, dues. Uh, Jerry, both of the Jerry's pay dues. All of the dues paying members of the Austin Boat and Canoe Club are very proud to be providing 100 years of services to the taxpayer. So um, in that recreation budget you saw, 6% slice there, we're not included in that. We don't cost the town of Ossining taxpayers a dime. But we certainly invite all of you to join us, to come on down, uh, be our guest at the many community events that we organize. So uh, thank you very much. So I do want to make one comment about the parks. This was uh, this 2014 was a year of the parks. We did a lot of work in the parks the last year. Uh, we built a new stage at the waterfront. We put in some playgrounds. Uh, we did quite a bit of work. We did some um, work on the parks. So the parks have improved greatly over the last uh, the last uh, 2014. So I'm going to assume that uh, the majority of you here are, uh, are for um, the, on the assessing issue and our reassessment that we are doing in the town of Austin at this point. And, I, and we welcome your comments. Uh, I'm just going to read you a couple of things because uh, I want to make sure that any confusion um, as to uh, when we talk about um, the homestead option of the uh, reassessment. So, because the town is the, is the assessing unit, Homestead would have to be approved first by the town board, then it could be approved by the schools and villages, and they would have an option to approve. The town levies and collects the taxes for the town general and the unincorporated areas, and then we also collect the school and the county taxes. The data required to do a tax shift analysis so to even start to consider the homestead option won't be available until early 2016 when the new values of all the properties are determined. The revaluation of the town of Austin is a complex process that involves the entire town, including all properties, including exempt properties, cemeteries, school properties, all properties will have to be um, have to be evaluated in the villages of Austin and Briarcliff Manor and 91% of the village of Briarcliff Manor and in the uh, area of the town on, that is borders on the outside of the villages or the unincorporated area. Important formulas will be run based upon uh, and can only be run after the collection of all assessment data has been presented and collected and input into the database by the company collecting the re-evaluation. In 2016, the town board members will be given, along with all the residents, will have access to extensive data, reports, opinions from experts, Several public meetings, and we have town hall meetings every six weeks, will be conducted in which the public is expected to be an integral part of the process to determine the, the homestead option. In addition to the facts and figures, there are multiple complex factors that must be taken into account and will necessarily impact the entire community. All factors will be considered by the town at that time with public input and advice from the town legal counsel. The underlying facts and figures to be considered by board members voting on the homestead option will not be available, and it's, it kind of repeats itself, until 2016. Thus, the Homestead Act is not going to be voted on by any town board until later in 2016 at the latest. Any vote by a village would not be conducted until after the town vote. 
it would be unlikely that anyone should be commenting on the homestead option right now. So I just wanted to give you that. We're not, um, and we're, we more than welcome your comments. We understand, I've been to a lot of the meetings in the different condo developments. Um, I didn't get to go to some at the end because we had conflicting times, but the assessor who is not here tonight and Tyler Technology is doing the reassessment. We are now in the unincorporated area doing the, uh, the inspections. We hope that all the properties will be inspected uh, by March or April of 2015. And at the in July of uh, July 1st of 2015, we will come and they will determine that that is the values of the of the different. Um, we will stop the sales. So if a sales, if everybody sales suddenly skyrocket again, the the point that they'll t determine that will be in 2015. Then what has to happen is they're going to do neighborhood deline delineations in the condo. Um, world, your condo development will be your neighborhood. I live in Indian Village, Indian Village will be my neighborhood. And they will break up the different areas. So just because someone has a million dollar house over here, they're not going to compare your house or, you know, uh, to that. So they do that and, and then by early 2016, they're going to come with two different sets of numbers and one will say with the homestead option, without the homestead option. In the case of Marinette, it didn't make a difference. Because when you saw up on that screen today where um, you pay, let's say if you live in the village of Austin, if you look at your tax bill, you may see that you pay, I'm, and I'm, don't, don't, you know, don't quote me on the exact number, but let's say you pay $740 per thousand assessed. Well, your assessment, whether you're in a condo, a single family house, or a one to four family house, is done, uh, is done totally differently than it will be done after the reassessment. When you're at full value, you will not be paying 700 and some odd dollars per thousand assessed because right now your house might only be assessed at $20,000. When you're at full assessment, you will be paying maybe $10 per thousand assessed, because you'll be at the full assessed value of the house. It won't be this major difference because there's also, what, when it comes to doing your taxes and stuff, we also put in this equalization rate right now. So let's say that your, let's say that your house is um, appraised at $20,000 and you pay $14,000 in taxes. Well, the pay, reason you pay the $14,000 in taxes is not just because the $20,000, but it also has that equalization rate in it. It's a complicated system. We need to break it down, and we do understand a lot of things. We understand the emotional side of this thing. We understand the values. We understand a lot of seniors um, live in condominiums for a lot of reasons. They live in it for, um, because you have all the services there, you have your, you might have a pool in your condo complex, but they also live on fixed incomes, and we understand that. This board does understand that, and what, that will all be taken into consideration. But we can't even look at those numbers. We have nothing in front of us right now. All that the, um, they're doing is taking an inventory of the different properties. Now, as I say that, people are starting to get their data cards back with their properties on it. If there are mistakes, on that data card that you get it back, then please correct it and either fax it or scan it in um, to and send it back to Tyler Technologies and they will make the corrections. If they're, if they're uh, let's say if they're totally off, they might say we need to come out and do a reinspection of your home or condo. What we do want you to know is that this is a process that we're all working on together. So we need to get that we need to get that inventory of every single property in Austin done, so that we can actually estimate. We we figure right now we're about 33 percent tax exempt. That's a lot of tax exempt properties out there. We have a lot of churches. We have Marinol. We have um, uh, the Dominican Sisters, uh, Mariondale. So we have a lot of different properties out there. 
So what we want to do is we all want to work together. And we have, we're more than welcome your comments, because I know most of you are here over the homestead. But we, I just want to emphasize this, and I will say this every meeting, that we have no numbers in front of us yet to even evaluate it, nor would we, uh, nor would we be right to, to just come out and say, I'm for Homestead, I'm against Homestead, I want Homestead. You can't do that right now until you have the facts and figures in front of you. So I welcome anyone that wants to come up and speak. Um, and uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that. Okay, so thanks. Um, I respect Madam Supervisor's statements. I have not made a, a, a specific decision on this, but I, I am only speaking because when I hear we, when you speak for me, I would like to speak for myself. I, I do have questions of my own about this um, with respect to whether or not part of the reason why we would, there's even a thought process about Homestead is because if you have a shift of your commercial uh, businesses um, being taxed less, which becomes a burden on your residential, is that part of the decision making for shifting um, the tax burden onto then possibly the condos. And if, if that's, that's one of my questions, if that would be one of the reasonings. And then if that is a true statement, then I guess the second part of that is, part of your statement has been that the reason why we're doing the reevaluation is because we're paying tax certs and uh, scars over and over again and I see a lot of the certs coming down from the businesses, so I, I'm wondering how much of a percentage of our businesses have already reduced their taxes, uh, which would then mean that there wouldn't be a big shift after, I mean, so, I mean, I have some questions about all of this. And a lot of those questions, I, I do not profess to be a professional at this at all, and I'll, it is more of a, fair and equitable taxes across the board. I think we're gonna find some residential um, homes and that are not properly assessed, let's put it that way, and we're going to find some businesses, but once you get the whole package together, I wanna to make sure everybody understands too that n this does not increase. We do not get more money into the budget. You have a budget number that you come up with, what it takes you to re either run the town or the village or the schools, and you get your budget number, and it's how is it dis uh, distributed between the commercial and the and the uh, and the um, residential um, condos are considered commercial properties right now. Okay, so I just want you to understand that. So what we need to do is we will bring in the people at the next town hall meeting, which will be in January. And uh, I apologize if it snows and everything, but we do like to have this every six weeks and they can answer some of your questions and you're more than welcome to go to the assessor's office for any information that you want to. Um, but there is, uh, it is not a question of, of looking to the condos for money, but it's a question only of fair and equitable taxation for all. So um, we're gonna leave it at that. So a question on uh, um, the, the assessment. Uh, was you have to hold it close, and John, you have to give your name and address, okay? Because we're going to require that. John Van Steen, Sylvia Sofan. Um, at the previous two meetings in which Tyler spoke, um, I think they were inconsistent in their. In their Still can't hear you. You have to be very close, unfortunately. Put on lip. Um, they, they, they were they were inconsistent in their delivery on. on Certainly, one aspect is questionable to me, and so I was wondering if the board, uh, between now and the next time of presentation, would be able to get a, get a clarification. Yeah, what was that? Uh, take, take for example, the case where you have two identical three-bedroom ranches with a kitchen, living room, unfinished basement. One of the kitchens has a marble countertop imported from Europe. 
The other one has an identical looking linoleum countertop um, imported from Home Depot. <laughs> the, um, uh, the, the, two, the, the two houses, as a result, are different in value because the one has the countertop and the other one doesn't. In Tyler's first presentation, they said that they really didn't care what people had in the kitchen as long as the items in their stove, refrigerator, etc., were pretty much the same because they knew that when the house was sold, somebody else was, the, the new owner was going to renovate the kitchen anyway. But in the last meeting, okay, but in the last meeting, they left a distinct impression that if you had done an upgrade to your kitchen, all other things being the same, they would, they, your assessment would be higher on the house because at that particular point in time, they valued your house slightly more, so you would pay slightly more in taxes regardless of what would happen over the next two, three, four, five year periods as your kitchen depreciated and your ne next door neighbor improved his after the tax assessment. So you can, uh, can, can yeah. you, you I will definitely check that, that out for you, Jeff, yes. Okay. Because, and one of the reasons I ask that is, is, is that uh, I, I believe that uh, people are uh, essentially preventing Tyler from coming in because they feel that this type of change that they may have made in their house will raise their taxes. I, I think you would, and I, and I don't want to speak for them because I, what we'll do is we'll arrange for them to be here in the January meeting, but then they can answer a lot of other questions too. But um, uh, I think what they meant is if you had a chef's kitchen, that which is totally different than you having uh, marble countertops with the same refrigerator and the same stove. And stuff. If you have gone out and spent $300,000 on your kitchen, uh, which some people do, and God bless them, right? And, um, uh, but th that's totally different because it changes the value of your house. But from what I've gathered from the data sheets, and I want to make one more comment about the data sheets. If you get your data sheets and you don't have the ability to scan it in or to fax it, you can surely bring it over to us and we'll take care of it for you. So at 16 Grove Avenue, uh, or mail it to us. Um, so. Uh, but I think that let, let's bring them back in. Let's get a thorough uh, explanation. It, um, I think it was more of um, it's more of square footage that they're looking for. Um, I don't know in our let's call them ranches or Cape Cods or anything that you could probably do anything that would change the value of your neighborhood. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let, let that. Thank you. My name is Anne McGuire and I'm from Fox Hill Condominium. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. But you do have to hold it quite close. Okay. I apologize. Yes. I want to, one of the things I would like to address was the article that appeared in the newspaper where they made the comparison of a three bedroom house against a three bedroom condo. And the taxes for the house were almost double to what was listed what the condo paid. But nowhere in that article did it show how much we pay in common charges because we have to maintain and replace our roads and our curbing, paving, that you, the town doesn't do, and there's taxes involved in that. And also we pay for our own snow removal, our own electric I understand your, your situation. We know that the decision isn't going to be made until 2016, mm -hmm. but already somebody has talked to me that they want to sell because they can't afford to wait to 2016 and get hit with a 30 or 40 percent increase in taxes. <laughs> Is, I know this is over a year away until you know what you're doing. Just please realize this is affecting people right now. And I and I just want to comment. That was one of the reasons that I brought up the fact that you cannot take um, you cannot take a forty say I'm going to pay forty percent more than I am paying today because the tax the whole tax system will be different. 
And that's the problem that, and, and, I, and I'm trying to find someone, you know, the gentleman comes down from New York, um, Mr. Waldron, he comes down and he's the big homestead option person. So I'm trying to get that he can explain that to be very, very clear. So right now, um, let's say that your house is assessed, your condo is assessed at um, uh, $9,000 and my house is assessed at $15,000 because we pay this $700 and odd dollar thing. But when it's at full assessment and your house is worth $400,000 and my house is worth $300,000, but what is that going to be? And is it going to be worth it? And it's complicated, but I understand. And you know, one of the things that happened in other communities is no one brought out this homestead option to the very, very end. And I said, we cannot do that. That's not fair. You can't spring it on people. We don't want to spring it on people. I don't want people to be anxious for the next uh, two years, a year and a half. I get that. I get that. But, uh, but I just want I just want to I just want you to know that we do we do understand that we are we're, you know that a lot of people are on fixed incomes. We I've gone to a lot of the condo meetings, so yes, we do understand. I, in fact, I, I think that's a good point to bring up to that newspaper. Again, we don't write the newspaper articles, I guess, <laughs> right? So I think it's a good point though to bring up to that newspaper article, gentlemen, that he should include in there that there, there are many issues. There are amenities that the people uh, pay for. She mentioned it. She okay. didn't put in, like for instance, I pay over six hundred dollars a month common charges. Right. So that's almost that's all well over seven thousand a year added on to my taxes. Right. So the difference is very minimal mm -hmm. between the homeowner and between what we are paying. Mm -hmm. And as I say, there's a third of our residents that have that are retired, and if we take people over fifty. It's true, though. It's, you really just have to make sure this is entered into all the oh, equations. No, that is, that is one of the key parts of the equation. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I completely reject what he what he's what he was uh, uh, getting at. Uh, anything that relies on square footage alone, and, and that's the way Tyler seems to be going, is a regressive tax. People who can afford to put in uh, uh, granite countertops, which I, I went through one of these um, open houses. They had a granite countertop. They put in a lot of stuff. Um, uh, uh, new floors, fancy uh, fancy replaced all the interior doors, which are which are cardboard, by the way, the, the original ones that were put in, they're, they're heavy-duty cardboard on a, on a wood frame. I didn't notice that until, the, uh, it took me a few years to notice that. And uh, to, it's a, re it, it's a regressive tax to say that you're, gonna, you're going to base it on square footage alone. Um, those who have had the money, you could throw in $50,000, $100,000 into one of these dumps and make it look up to standards really first-rate standards. And if you can't afford to do that, uh, and if, if you're going to just go on square footage, it, it, it becomes a regressive tax. The wealthier pay less. Uh, doing expensive alterations are expensive. Uh, First-class alterations, a marble, a nice marble mantle of some sort, uh, new windows, new doors, new everything with nice uh, bleached oak floors. Uh, this is expensive stuff. And, and to say he was implying that he was annoyed about that, he wanted that square footage and blah, 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 that's, that's, it, it makes it a regressive tax. They should absolutely not. And I saw, I was speaking to Ruth and Tyler, and I said, what happens if you can't get into inspect a place? And she said, well, she, she sort of ducked it. Uh, she didn't think they could do anything about it. What they should do is, if, you, if a person will not allow you in their place, Hit them with the highest appraisal that was ever that was the highest appraisal that was ever made. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I hear what you're saying, sir, but that can't. Do it. <laughs> you, you, you're in favor of aggressive taxation. No, no, I, I'm just, 
I'm not in favor of saying hit them with the highest zone. <laughs> Again, one of the things about the condos is that you have a set standard of homes. Like you might have a one bedroom, you might have a one bedroom with a loft, you might have a one two bedroom, a two bedroom with a loft. So they have a lot of that information already. So if you, I understand that if you haven't done a lot of upgrades on your condo, my mom lives in a condo, uh, if you haven't done a lot of uh, upgrades on your condo compared to other people, there's, but there's still just so much you can do in, in a condo. There is, there's hardly any limit on what you can do. Okay. <laughs> so this can, we this, can we let this gentleman speak? <laughs> and unfortunately, you have to hold it quite close to your mouth. Uh, my name is James Nelson. My name is James Nelson. I'm at 286 Horseshoe Circle in Fox Hill. Uh, and uh, I have uh, two points I want to make in opposition uh, to the Homestead Option. Point one is, if the homestead option is such a good idea, why have so few municipalities chosen it? So let's look at some data from the New York State Department of Taxation Office of Real Property Tax Services to get specific. Turns out there are 1,505 towns and villages in the state of New York. There are 35 towns and villages who have passed the homestead option. That works out to 2%. Among the towns, it's 932 total towns, 17 have taken the homestead option. That's 2%. In villages, there are 573. 18 have taken the homestead option. That's 3%. Now you might say, that this data set is too broad since Central, North, and West New York are nothing like West New York. So let's look at the downstate counties only that constitute the metro area, less New York City's five boroughs, because the homestead does not apply there and because New York City is nothing like West New York either. Thank goodness. <laughs> So we're talking about Westchester, Putnam, and Rockland, plus Nassau and Suffolk on Long Island. So the five downstate counties have 183 towns and villages. 23 have chosen the homestead option, which works, works out to more than the two or three percent for the whole state. It actually works out to 12.5 percent but that is still just one in eight towns or villages. So my conclusion is that these numbers show that Homestead is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the exception and not the rule. And if the objective is to make the tax burden more equitable, which I have heard you say, Madam uh, Chairman, then we need to find a way that can reasonably the condom taxes, not double them or raise them by 40% or 5%. Overnight, using Homestead, that degree of change is clearly unreasonable and unfair. Which brings me to my second point. Can I just comment on that one first point for one second? Sure. Uh, I just want you to know that you can only do the Homestead option when you do a reassessment. So of, the, of those communities that you said, how many of them have, have all those communities done a reassessment? Of the 1,000, uh, you know, the 990, They may or may not have, right. but, uh, because that's, that's, and I guess New York State is notorious for being terrible. behind right. uh, the, the, the curve on this. Right. But I'm saying that it is available <coughs> to 1,000. Only if you do a reassessment. That's that I understand that. Okay. I just wanted I just wanted to put that point in there, that's all. But okay. thank you for that other information. So my second point is that uh, if all the condo owners tax 
go up. That constitutes a class of owner and is therefore class discrimination. Just like discrimination based on age, race, religion, gender, or social status. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments they'd like to make tonight? We have a lot of votes in the condos, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of votes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Keep it in mind. 2016 is soon yeah. to happen. It's fact. not a long time away. And I, I think I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'll speak for myself and I'll speak for the majority of the board members. And while we appreciate that, and as I said before, when we, when we started this conversation, when we started the whole conversation about doing the reassessment, it is our goal to um, do the best we can as your elected officials. Uh, this isn't about the next election. It's not about uh, getting, getting, and you can believe me or not believe me, but that's, that's your prerogative. But so we keep, it, we keep everything in mind. We get that. We get uh, the comments from everybody, and uh, some of them were excellent tonight, so I want to thank you. Um, but uh, let's move forward. Let's get all this information. The faster we get all the information done um, and we get the correct information, again, when you get that data card, it's very important that you review it carefully. It, whether you're in a condo, a single family house, or anything up to a one, two, or three family house, four and above is going to be is a commercial property again. So um, please review it. Make sure that it has, if your basement is finished, it has that your basement is finished. It has uh, how many bedrooms that you have, it has the correct amount of baths, it has the kitchen and what have you. So it's very important that we get to gather all that information. Um, so if we're done with that for tonight, because remember, every six weeks we have a town hall meeting, we can talk about this, and we will make sure the people are here. But I wanted to take a second, especially to the people from the unincorporated area that are here tonight. Some of you live in the village of Austin, some of you might even live in the village of Briarcliff Manor. But I wanted to introduce uh, Lieutenant uh, Sylvester, okay. um, um, Kevin is uh, going to be our liaison for the police department when we move from the county police on January 1st to the village of Austin, and we're very, very pleased. So, Kevin. Hi, first I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank the board for all the hard work they put on to make this decision. Um, my name is Kevin Sylvester. I'm a lieutenant with the Austin Police Department. We're really, really excited about some of the things that are be coming up starting in January. Uh, we're looking for a seamless transition from the county to us on January 1st. We talked a lot about our police department being community-based. Um, it's something we pride ourselves on. So you'll be seeing a lot of us. In the next couple of weeks, you'll start seeing myself with the board and the supervisor uh, and also Mayor Ronick, who's one of our community policing liaisons. We're going to be stopping by all of the businesses. We're going to be making appointments and coming to your meetings at your homeowners associations and the condos mm -hmm. and neighborhoods uh, groups of all different kinds. So we're looking really forward, uh, we're really looking forward to meeting with everybody, to getting to know everybody. When you see our uh, men and women out there, introduce yourself. Uh, they should be doing the same with you. And uh, we look forward to working with you. If anybody's on social media, we've got a great Facebook page where we'll share all kinds of information with you about things that are going on. Um, sign up for Nixle, you'll get all kinds of text message updates for everything we have going on. So. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. We really look forward to working with you. And one last thing before we close this meeting down for the night. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have gotten uh, caught up in the traffic jams on 134 and 9A. And we appreciate your patience. Uh, they're still working on it. But that is to give us left-hand signals, real left-hand signals off of, off of 9A onto 134. That was very, very important. Uh, there'll be a red arrow, so people can't just have the green arrow. When the green arrow goes away, it becomes they start darting across the road. Uh, the accidents are unbelievable, that we need to slow them down. We also put up, uh, we, have, we, we don't control that road. The state of New York does. It's major negotiations to get anything done. But that's why you now have a no turn on red when you're coming into Austin. Uh, from 9A onto 134. The no turn on red is because people come out of Kichuan, they kind of sit in the middle of that road because there's a little traffic there, and
and people come around that corner, and when you don't have a no turn on red, people don't even stop. They kind of just slide right through. And we had a lot of accidents right at that intersection. So I want to thank everyone for their patience. Because, uh, and if you are on Nixle, if you have a cell phone that you can get text messages, it's very good because they'll tell you when there's work being done out there. And I'm very proud uh, that one of our projects that we got done this year was getting the sewer lift station taken out of that area so that whole fenced in part is all gone and it's all clean over there now so our entrance into our community is much nicer. So we've gotten a lot of stuff done this year. We hope to get a lot of stuff done next year. Let's all work together and uh, we'll accomplish all these goals and keep the taxes as low as we can for uh, in especially that we live in Westchester County. So thank you very much. Have a great day.